Thank you for tuning in to Shop Talk with Auto Week Clinic today. My name is Aaron. This is Michael. And what we're doing, we're recapping a video we done on a 2003 Chrysler PT Cruiser 2.4. What it came in for was a lack of power, uh, not running the best in the world, and it had a check engine light on. So we pulled it in, checked out the codes. Tell us what codes we come up with, Mike. Well, first of all, I'd like to say when it would go into a lack of power mode, mm -hmm. you could put the car in neutral, cut the car off, and start it back up, and at that point it would go back into a normal mode. Now you have to do this quite often because it would go into a reduced power mode quite often. <laughs> uh, the codes we had was the P2305, the P0352, the P0351, and the P0300. Of course, we went to diagnose the P0, I'm sorry, the P2305 first. Um, that was simply saying check for uh, bad coil pack plugs, wires, check resistance there, you know, we checked all that, didn't really come up with anything. Went to the P0352, which was the uh, ignition cool driver circuit number two problem. Uh, we checked everything out there, we checked resistance from the computer to the coil, we checked the ADS relay, auto shutdown relay for power, we uh, commanded it on with a scan tool, and we also checked for any kind of pulses from the ignition one or ignition two driver circuit. Now, the only thing here that you really couldn't do at home is if you didn't have an expensive multifunction scan tool or bi-directional scan tool, was apply the auto shutdown relay on and off. And that's what we did, Aaron, and we checked for power with the auto shutdown relay on and off to the coil. Of course, we just checked it with a simple test light, but we used our scan tool to actually go through the PCM to command that relay on and off. Other stuff we used was just simply a, uh, a test light and also just a regular multimeter. Pretty inexpensive equipment there. Yeah, and that's something that a lot of people should have or should buy anyway if you're going to do any type of car repair. Correct. A test light and multimeter definitely something you want to have laying around if you're going to attempt to work on a car. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, we ran into a pretty big issue with wrong color coding and terminal uh, specification, ter terminal identification when we looked it up. This is an 03, it's VIN as an 03, it says 02 on the door, it's VIN as an 03, but we could not find the proper terminal identification looking at our computer, we're using two different programs, could not find it under that. We went to an 04, couldn't find it, then we went to an 05, and then finally found the proper terminal identification for the PCM. Now, I don't know why that is, and the color was even wrong too. Uh, they didn't it didn't look like what it read or what, to what it was said. It didn't look correct to me at all. Now, we had to use a lot of deductive reasoning here to find out which two we were looking for for the ignition one, ignition two primary circuits there, but we did find it. Now, have you run into that before, Aaron? I want to say that could definitely throw you off, uh, throw a wrench in our plans. Uh, I have run into it some parts-wise where, you know, vehicle should take part A, but it actually takes part B. The customer brings it in, so this is not what my car has. Yeah, okay, sometimes the manufacturers may not supply the correct information, uh, may not supply the correct information to the repair, the people that write up the repair material. Some things may get lost. Now, this was a little excessive being an 03 and with 05 um, information here. So, yeah, that's a big excessive, Chrysler. <laughs> I'm going to say this is, uh, I was a GM tech, and so were, you know, you're a GM parts guy, and mm -hmm. I haven't seen GM screw up. I'm not saying they don't. I'm just saying I don't have anything off the top of my memory of where they screwed up that bad. So. Uh, and they usually catch it. Uh, GM's pretty good about catching if they've got a mid-year change or something. There, they're pretty good on correcting it or you know at least mentioning it. I want to say Chrysler definitely screw up <laughs> on your part. <laughs> For sure. So we did come to the what we believe is a proper diagnosis on this. We went through the steps. Now it's looking like we're looking at a bad PCM. That's what it looks like, Aaron. Yeah, and you know, the PCM is pretty much the brain of the vehicle. It controls your electrical functions, engine functions, transmission functions. Uh, you know, everything has one now. Some of them have more than one module. Some of them have modules for different parts of the car, but uh, you're going to see that a lot. Now, do you repair, replace, I'm say replace a lot of these? Uh, actually, yeah. Chrysler PCMs actually do quite a bit of replacement. Now, uh, of course, we can, I have the ability to program as well, but there's, even if you get it from Chrysler, it does not come programmed. You have to go and get it programmed from Chrysler, from somebody like me at Norris Auto Clinic that has the ability to program a PCM. And uh, you do that as well at GM, right? Program? Uh, yeah, yeah. There's uh, pretty much about all modules now in GM. Uh, anything about 2000 above, a lot of uh, modules need programming. Yeah, correct. They do not, they do not come programmed, correct. Yes. So even if you go with a junkyard module, you're still looking at programming in order to get the right information into the, for the right vehicle. And there are some times that you cannot reflash a module. Correct. Correct. So junkyard item may not work in that instance. 
I've had a lot of luck out of remanufactured computers. There's a couple companies I deal with that they'll go ahead and actually flash them for me. I give them the VIN number, give them the mileage. They actually program it for me. That's included in the wow. price of the PCM programming. All I got to do is plug and play. It is very convenient for you and the customer. Really. Well, for, for, for me, the garage owner, it's very convenient. Uh, for the customer, it's also pretty quick mm -hmm. and also less expensive. So it seems to work out great for us. Yep. And, you know, when you get them from your dealers, your OE, those definitely will have to go back to the manufacturer a lot of time or to shops like this one that, you know, where you do have the ability and the equipment and everything to do that. I know, nothing bad on the dealer there, Aaron, but I can't afford their PCMs. Uh, the OEM PCMs are quite a bit higher. Um, now, your aftermarket, you know, pretty much what they do, they take an old PCM, they have a uh, set standard, they check it, repair what's wrong. Sometimes it may be simple, sometimes it may be something pretty complex, but actually turn it around, send it back out. They really don't have a lot in parts other than just the repair time and labor on them. So, yeah, they can do them a lot cheaper. The manufacturer has to build them from scratch, so, you know, therefore, as far as the return rate, usually a uh, OEM PCM, you don't have to replace them as much, or even as replacing parts, some of the reman OEMs that you get, uh, you usually don't have a big problem with them on mine. Yeah, end. it's like a bunch of crap to justify their really high prices, <laughs> if you ask me, but whatever. I'm okay with my aftermarket reman stuff. I haven't had a problem out of it yet. <laughs> now, some of the GM BCMs I've looked at, the body control modules, they've been pretty affordable, but uh, the GM Powertrain control modules? No, sir. Even from Chrysler, especially. Mm -hmm. You're talking eight, nine hundred dollars well, for a foreign. Chrysler PCM. I mean, foreign PCMs. Oh yeah, like Honda, <laughs> Toyota, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Extremely high. Guys, thanks for tuning mm -hmm. in. Any questions, comments, or concerns? Make sure to check us out. Email us, tweet us, fax us, <laughs> telegraph. You Carry your pigeon. <laughs> you can get us at autoeclinic.com, autoeclinic at gmail.com. Check us out on YouTube, subscribe to us for all the latest updated videos. Also, like I said, keep an eye on us on Facebook and Twitter. Yeah. Aaron, you got anything? Nope, don't have a thing. Carrier pigeons, they're going to poop eventually. It's going to yeah, happen. And they're going to poop on something. It's going to happen.